So this isn't really a tutorial, but I will be discussing a bit of a process that I'm going through. Uh, it's just recording a session of me up late painting thumbnails. So the reason I do these is just to really practice composition. So the main elements of composition being shape, value, harmony, repetition, pattern, perspective, texture, all, all these different things. It's really just all the design elements of principles as well as just principles of good illustration. So the reason I'm not doing them in color is because it helps me just to think about value and shape and the composition. So you can do these just doing line work first and then paint them in. But the reason I'm just working big is because I can think more about big shapes and not get caught up in line work. And you can always go in if if you want to take any of these to final. You can go in there and drop in perspective and then fix up all the all the things that are wrong with it. You get the line work in there over over it. So I'm laying in a perspective grid for this one because in doing these studies as well I don't want to neglect uh, thinking about perspective rules and it's always good for me to practice that as well. So just laying in a few grids there, easy to repeat them. So a lot of these uh, Thumbnails, I'm getting a lot of ideas just from glancing at reference, so just taking a quick peek at it, not really keeping the image up and staring at it, but just kind of flipping through a folder, getting some ideas and then taking that straight into my drawing. So that way, um, training my, my visual memory a bit, and also it helps me to prevent, helps prevent me from getting caught up on the reference. And that way I can just think about my own ideas that I want to convey while I'll still be inspired from real things, real real things that we see in life. Such as this one where I was inspired by the temple in Angkor Wat where they have all the, the big trees which kind of look like they're melting down the, down the temple, just really overgrown. It's got that really time-worn feel. So... I thought it would be cool to combine that with an old locomotive train wreck and then just block in a, where a temple might be in the background. So a lot of these are very suggestive, suggestive of the detail. I'm not, like I said, I'm more concerned about specifics and just getting some ideas down. And then thinking about uh, interesting angles and interesting composition with how the shapes are ordered in the in the image. So you can think about elements in the in the image forming a pattern. So is it a is it a pattern that is pleasing to the eye? Is it does it have a rhythm to it? And all these other all these other helpful things we can think about. I uh, highly recommend you look at Loomis's books, Successful Drawing, and also uh, what's the other one? I have the painter. I mean, look at all of his books. His books are amazing. But he's got a lot of good stuff, especially in I have the painter, where he talks about design elements and principles. So if you if you can study those and uh, put them into practical studies as well, such as doing these thumbnails, and when you're thinking about these rules and how you can use them as tools you'll become much more uh, fluent in kind of the language of design and actually speaking that in your art. So, yeah, I really love doing these thumbnails. They're just awesome because I'm not thinking about, um, you know, the picture being this amazing picture and thinking about all the the design heaps. I am making suggestions of design and different things but really I'm just making a little image that at first read you can tell pretty much what it is. 
and it's almost a preview that you can do that will make you uh, more more keen on getting a final done. So if I really like the thumbnail and I think, oh, that would make a cool scene if I then took this, blew it up and added all these other details, I can really see that uh, being good and worth my time. Because generally if, if the composition doesn't work as a thumbnail, it won't work as a fully rendered out image. And also, if the idea isn't that interesting, um, yeah, you, you probably won't be too keen on it. So, have some interesting ideas in there because it's one thing to render and have a great composition and everything, but it's very important, I believe, to add a storytelling element in there because sure, people are going to look at your image for a while and, and look at all the technical aspects of it, but what's really going to make it memorable and keep them really interested in the image is some sort of storytelling, whether it be interaction of characters or something going on in the scene that um, yeah it conveys some story element as if you as if you're watching a film and you and you pause it halfway in a scene. Um, could you look at that scene and tell what was going on? So applying the same idea into an, into your own images. So I thought with this composition it looked a bit boring just being these mountains on the left there. So I've added some planes as I was talking about a bit of a storytelling element. So these guys might be, um, you know, fighter planes on their way to way across the mountains to invade a country, or they might be scout planes or explorer planes. So really, the audience can come up with the different ideas behind it, and as I said, that's going to um, make it more interesting to them if they can um, imagine these different stories going on in the scene. So another reason I like doing these thumbnails is I can play up the different environments. So although it does help to um, study and try to stay consistent in your ideas, um, for these little exercises, it's fun to play around with different uh, elements. So, rather than just sticking to, say, sci-fi or something like that, I'm just thinking about kind of what comes to my mind, really. What comes to my mind after flicking through some reference and um, what, what I'm interested in at that very moment that I'm painting. So I always like really epic images, you know, playing with the scale and making things look huge and overwhelming. It's always something that's interested me, um, getting a sense of scale in your image that kind of makes the image, uh, makes the viewer kind of take a step back because it's almost, um, they, they almost get like vertigo from looking at it. So that, that's something I'd like to bring into my own work. When there's stuff in that I see in other people's work that conveys a certain feeling or, um, yeah, whatever it may be, I often like to learn from that and think about how I could use it in my own work. Not, not being a copycat, but just being inspired, really. Because really, art is... It will generally be a collection of things that you're interested in. Uh, technical things that I'm doing here in Photoshop. Uh, I select out some areas just to boost the levels and contrast and sharpen areas. So trying to separate this front area uh, with the tent there. 
which uh, eventually sharpen up and uh, boost the contrast a bit. And yeah, I like I like drawing the lighter things, and a great way to do that is to place dark things on light things. So I wanted those mountains to really look dangerous, and so that that's another element that I, I should have brought up is uh, shape theory. So there's objects in different shapes that you know they might look aggressive or they might look friendly or um, or kind of strong and robust so it's really just variations on the primitives such as triangle square circle so a triangle will generally look kind of sharp if you think of shark's teeth and uh, fangs and then think of round stuff, you know, it might be a bouncy ball or like a, a fluffy bunny's tail. And then square shapes, you're thinking of big solid things, uh, big solid blocks and buildings and just generally has a strong impression to it. And you can obviously play around and uh, mix those shapes together. So now just going back to that perspective on just laying in some value there. So I hope you learned something. Uh, it's really just me ranting on. But really um, check out those books I mentioned and uh, try these studies yourself. Thanks for watching.